uh, the last class we were discussing about the wrappers. We have completed the half of the program. So what we will do is we will continue the wrapper one. <clears throat> so yesterday, what we have done, we have created an Apex class, which is a wrapper for year. And here we did created the constructor and inside and as well as we created the wrapper. What is the wrapper here? What is the wrapper? A wrap account. And what is the wrapper definition? What is uh, it contains the variables uh, that we can use it in other classes. Hmm. Right. So wrapper contains the variables and which this is only for the developers. This helps the wrapper is going to help the developer in order to build their object within the Apex. So for this class wrapper, we have implemented wrapper class. We have implemented with the name of wrapper, wrap account. So wrap, wrap account has two variables. One is the account, another one is selected. Another one, Boolean data type is selected. Now for every wrapper class, for every wrapper method or wrapper class, every wrapper class, we have a constructor within this. Every wrapper class will have a constructor within this. Constructor, what it will do? On load of the, on load of the uh, class or on load of the wrapper class, it will try to execute it. It will try to execute it. Did we discuss what is the constructor there? Did we discuss what is the constructor? No, ma'am, not in detail, I guess. Not in detail, okay. Right. So we'll discuss, what is the constructor, anybody? Constructor is like ma'am. It's like uh, you know, its name is same as class name. Mm. It it will it invoke the whenever the main method is called. So constructor in Apex. Constructor always sits in the Apex. Constructor is. In Apex programming code, in Apex programming, this is a code and is a special method. It's not a method. We do not call this as a method. This is a special method that is invoked, that is invoked when an object is created. When an object is created from the class. When an object is created from the class. What is the constructor? Constructor is a special method. Special method that is invoked or that is called when an object is created from the class. When an object is created from the class. Now, what are the properties of the constructor? properties of constructor. Properties of constructors are, first one is method name will be same as class. Method name will be same as class. Second one, access modifier always will be, always, public because we are going to call that wrapper class from anywhere and the third one is very important this method will be invoked only once only once it is invoked but when it will invoke it will invoke at the time of creation, creating the object, at the time of creating an object. Hmm. 
right? This is, these are the three method, three, uh, three uh, properties. What is the first property? Method name will be the same as class. Access modifier will be always public. This method will be invoked only once. What does that mean? Only once. So basically how the constructor will be designed. Constructor is, for example, I have a class. Public class, I'll say test method is my class name, right? This is my class. Inside the class, what I'll do is I'll create a constructor. I'll create a constructor. Constructor method name always, constructor method name is always same as a class. Constructor method name is always same as a class. And then we will write here. And when this method gets executed, whenever we are initializing it, at the time of creation of the class, at the time of creation of the object, whenever we are creating the object, while creating the object, it will be called, this wrapper method will be invoked only once when the, at the time of creation of the object like we'll take this of uh, class and we will try to initialize this using the new keyword right so only that time only it is going to call the wrap constructor constructor will be always called at the time of creation of the object now we have this constructor within the wrapper class okay this constructor what it is doing it is taking the account details as a parameter and passing to the what are the variables it has wrapper class what are the variables it has it is assigning the a value to the variable accn and is selected we are by default putting as a false this is a wrapper class now this is all good now coming to the main class main class also we need to have a constructor in our scenario because our scenario is on load of the on load of the page we wanted to show the list of accounts on load of the page we wanted to show the list of accounts if you wanted to show on load of the page on load of the page what will happen we will class we will call the class we will call the class so whenever the class is called i want a logic to be executed immediately and shown on the vf page what is that logic that should be executed? That is, we are going to write it into the constructor. In the constructor, what we have written, we are querying the 10 records. We are querying the 10 records. And each record, whatever we have queried, right, we are placing into the wrapper account list. This is what we have implemented yesterday. Any questions from the yesterday, how we have implemented? Any no, okay, perfect. So now next thing is that two things. One is on click of this VF page, this is a command button. Okay, on click of this VF page, what should happen? It should capture all the list, all the selected list from the UI. Whenever I select this and I click on the selected accounts, Selected accounts should capture only the one that is selected. Which are the user is selected, only those record it should take the selected account. So what I'll do is for the selected account, we will create a, a method. Because on click of this, I wanted to execute a logic. I wanted to execute a logic. What is the logic? Let's go ahead and implement first the logic. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll create a, another method which is called as a public void. Let's say processed process selected record. Process selected record. What is the reason that I'm implementing this class, this method? What is the reason that I'm implementing this method? to capture the selected records. 
So capture the selected records. Records, right? So I'll capture that. Ma'am, uh, can you explain uh, once again, like why we need the constructor for the class? Okay. One more time, please. Constructor. So for this class, why do I need a constructor? Now yeah. on load of this, like whenever I click on a preview or whenever user go to the visual course page, this table should default give me the 10 records. Okay. okay. If I have a something called on load, do not show me any data on clicking of some action here on clicking of button, then load the data. In that case, okay. we do not need the constructor because I'm going to click on the button based on the button action. It is going to display the record. But right now, whenever I load the page on the load of the page, I wanted to get the records. That means on load of the VF page, I'm going to call the class. As soon as I call the class, I want immediately 10 records without any logic. I wanted to load the 10 records. Okay, so wherever we want to implement like on load of the page, we need to display some data, we go for the constructor. Yes, right? yes. Okay. Yeah. Now here, so selected accounts, okay? So we are going to get that. Now for this, whatever the, this is to capture the records, okay? Where are my records? Records are storing into the wrap account. My records are storing into the wrap account list. So I'll take this. This is what list from where I'm taking this list wrap account, right? So what I'll do is I'll do the for loop wrap account and say wrap object colon, which one we are going to loop it? The one which is there here. Okay, I'm going to loop through the all the records. So what I'm doing here, I'm taking each and every record. Each and every record I'm taking, whatever is there inside this table, every record sits into the wrapper account list. Now here, one thing I wanted to check. What is the one thing that I wanted to check? If, if wrap up, yes, is selected. Is selected equal to true or not? If it is selected equal to true, then capture the information, right? Then capture the information. Now, where should I capture the information? I need to have a some variable to store captured information. So for that, what I'll do is I'll create a, a list. I'll create a list, public list of account I'll say selected account, selected account. Now this is, we are going to use it into the uh, visual force page. Right now, in order to capture the information, what I'll do, we have a selected account here. So I'll go ahead and initialize it. Equal to new list of account. Okay. Now, right now, I have uh, some variable which can be stored the account information, which is a selected account. Select a account dot add. And what is the information that I'm going to show, store? Wrap object, wrap object dot, I have a account dot ACCN. I have here account, so I'll take that wrap object dot ACC and now this information is logic has been implemented, but when this logic should be called, this logic should be called on, on clicking of the button. So what I'll do, I'll say action equal to I'll call that particular method. I'll call the particular method. Let's save it. Right, I have saved. Click on this. 
we didn't create a second table now to store yeah, the values. We did not create it. So right now what I'm doing is I'm selecting this. I'm clicking on this selected accounts. There is an action is happening at the back end. The logic has been executing it. But does it displays here? It doesn't because we have not yet implemented the second table. Second table is commented. Second table is commented. Now, where are the information? Second table from where it should take the data? Where is the value? The selected account values are sitting here. So I'll take in the second table selected accounts and I'll say simply w1.name, w1.phone number, w1.salesforce city. Let's say this is billing city. Now let's save it. And let's go ahead and refresh. Okay, so now I'll select this, selected accounts, it is coming here. From where this is the data is coming from, which variable does it store the selected information? Process selected record method. Selected accounts, selected account. the one which is going to store all the information. Then right? selected account is because here is the one which we are checking which one account selected equal to true, which selected equal to true, which record selected equal to true, only take that particular record and show the information from the visual course page. Now, if I select again this one, it will be displayed this. If I select again this one, it will be displayed this way. Okay, if I uncheck, it will be unchecked here. If I uncheck this one, it will uncheck the, the second. Clear? What are the data is selected? The same information is going to display in the second table. Any questions on this method? Uh, any questions on this class? No, ma'am. Okay. Next scenario is I have a drop down. This is my drop down. Okay. Inside this drop down, I am going to show all the list of account names. I'll show all the list of account names. All the list of account names. That means what are the names that I have? Uh, S force. Okay, sample account for entitlement, journey point. So these are the, what are the account names are there? All the account names I'm going to store, I'm going to show here. What are the account names that I have? I'm going to show it in. As soon as the user click on a drop down, I'll be showing these account names, fine. So on selection of this account name, I can select any account. I can select S4, I can select Edge Communication, I can select anything. Okay, on selection of one of the account name, I'm going to display the, I'm going to display the contact name. I'm going to display the contact name, related contact name. related contact name as well as I'm going to display the related opportunities. Related opportunities, list of the related opportunities, related list of opportunities. Here also list of contact names. So as soon as I select this, the below, I'm going to uh, show the account names, related account names here I'm going to show. If one of the account has two records, it is going to do, show all the two, two records. 
If account has a three contact, then it is going to show three contacts. If the account has only the opportunities, then it is going to show the list of opportunities. It will not show the contacts. So this is what we are going to implement. What are we doing here? We are showing the list of accounts here. And based on the selection of the account from the drop down, I'm going to show the records in the related contact records and related list of opportunities. Based on the selection of account, if the account has a contact, it will show contact. If the account has opportunity, it will show the opportunity. In case if account has contact and opportunity together, then it will show opportunity and uh, contact. In case, for example, S force does not have any contact and it does not have any opportunity. So what will happen? It will not show any opportunities or any contacts. So this is our requirement. So business requirement. based on the account name selection based on the account name selection display the related contacts and related opportunities. Related opportunities. Is a requirement clear for everybody? Yes, ma'am. Okay, first we will implement the business logic, then we will implement the UI. Because whenever we are implementing the UI, we need some references, what is the data that we are dis displaying in the table. Now, how many tables do I need here? As per the requirement, three tables, like two tables and one is for drop down. Two tables I needed. One is list. list. This yeah. is the list component, and these two are table. Tables. I needed two tables, one select list. Right, so this is what I need. But before that, we will go to the first business logic. Now, business logic, uh, let's note down step by step what needs to be implemented. This is the business requirement, okay? In the business requirement, first, what should happen on the load of What should it happen? Uh, it should uh, it should have the drop down drop down list drop down list. So drop down list is should have all the values selected values. So the first thing is that we need to load account. get 10 account records and 10 get 10 records and only we are interested in 10 records of names we are interested only 10 records of names right Only 10 records of names we are interested. We are not interested in any other. So it should return the names of the account. It should return the names of account that is, which has to be returned to the just a second.
So I need list of names. What is, once I have the list of name, what should happen next? I have a tech records that is showing the account names. Uh, we have to select whatever we want. So select. It needs checkbox. Not checkbox. Do we have a checkbox here? We do not have a checkbox. It is a drop down. Oh, okay. It is a drop down. So from the drop down, we have to select it. From drop down, select the select any one account name. Select any one account name. Select any one account name. Once it is selected, who is going to who is going to store that selected information? Who is going to store the selected information? The Boolean variable. Boolean variable is going to store the selected information because I need to, is it a Boolean or do I need any other information? Right now, do we need a Boolean or do we need a, any other value? I think Boolean is fine. We are selecting the string. So we have to store the data into the string data type. Into string data type. We are storing into string data type because I need to store. What are we selecting here? We are selecting the name. Name is string. So string data, it has to be stored into the string data type. Now, next thing. So based on the selected record, it should display uh, the related contacts and opportunities, whatever is available. Related contact we should display. So when I say related contact, is the contact is the single record or multiple records? Multiple, so it should be list. You can have, have one or many. Yes. So it has to be stored into the contact. Okay. Now fourth one, related opportunities. Related opportunities. Opportunities are one or more. So where can I store it in the list of opportunities? Right? Now, what else we need? Whenever, for example, I have selected the SF, S force. Okay, I have selected the S force. It is displaying the contact and it displaying the opportunity. When I switch from S force to the United Oil and Gas Singapore, when I switch from S force to United Oil, what should happen? This data should be refreshed. This table should get refreshed and display the latest information. So every time, whenever I change the value, the refresh should happen. On changing on, on changing value, on changing account name, right? Now here, so what I'll do is this scenario, we can implement it in all different ways. There are multiple ways we can implement it. But right now, we are focused on only wrappers. So I'm going to connect this scenario to the wrapper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we need a, how many wrappers we need? We need a three for each object. What are the three? 
uh, for each object we need uh, one wrapper right so contact wrapper opportunity wrapper mm -hmm. and account for account why do we need it account account what are we doing it here okay we are just getting the records okay getting the records and displaying it here when i'm displaying it on load of this on load of your okay. page what i'm going to do is i'm going to display the list of values here now when i say on load of the vf page okay i have a different ways i can use a constructor or i can use a different way also i'll show the different way because we have used a constructor before now what is the another way where we can go with loading the account names on load of the vf page now let's go ahead and implement a new apex class cl underscore 0909 2022 let's say that this is what we are doing it this is the second scenario of wrapper so i'll say wrapper to get 10 records right so how can i get the 10 records i need uh, to get for loop this. and uh, circle query circle query so i can get these records and store it into the one variable what kind of a variable can i store it what should list be the of, list, list of, of list of accounts right I can store it into the list of accounts. But, okay, now here, what is this? This is a select list, right? When we are going to implement it, Apex uh, Visual Force page, what is the tag that I'm going to use it for the list? I'm going to use it for Apex colon, select list. And inside list, what I'll be having it? Inside list, what I'll be having? Account names. Inside list, what I'll be having it? This is my Apex select list. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement it. File new VF page, VF underscore 0909. Wrapper PF2. Okay. Now tell me here, Apex page. After that, what is the tag? Apex uh, page block. Apex form or Apex page? Apex form. Then we will Apex use the Apex block. page block. Now inside this page block, now I'm going to use the Apex select, select list. Now inside this list, what will I use it? A list of account names. What is the ideal inside the list? Or what is the drop down values? How we are going to build it? For example, if I have a Apex colon, select radio. Okay, this is the radio at a high level. But if I wanted to display the values of radio, what are select we? Option. Select, select option. options. So we have to use the list also. We need select options because we have to build the options first. Select options. Now, what are these options? Uh, records, account records. Account records. So, what I'll do is, now these variables, whatever we have these variables, ideally it should be stored into the list of accounts. Right? But we are going to use it in the options. There are two types out there. One is option and options. 
right? If it is an option, then it is a single value, each value that we have already seen. Select option, I can use it and give the value, define the value there, right? You can define the value there. Now here I'm going to get it from multiple records, multiple data, I'm going to get it from the select options. So whenever we are using the select options and inside the inside the Apex class, that select options should be stored into the select option. Select option. Apex colon select option is nothing but I'll give a value equal to we can give any value here, radio or name, something, right? Let me show you that. So for example, here I have a value equal to, let's give, account name and here I'll not use Apex select options. I'll use the Apex colon select option. Now here what the value, what is the data I'll give? Value equal to new, right? I'll give title equal to new and let's save it. Formula expression attribute. What happened? I'll use the radio. We have done this scenario before. You guys remember? Yes, ma'am. So in select radio, and I can use some options here. Now let's go ahead and see preview. Instead of value, should it be label? Yes. So now here I'll give a label. Uh, no, uh, for the select list. We gave the value right previously. So instead of value, we give label. And uh, here, item, it should be item label, I guess, for the select option. Item label equal to new. Right. So item label equal to new. So whenever I give, what will happen? It is going to show the information there, right? So what I'm doing, I'm implementing individual. Here, I'm implementing individual. Implementing individual data here. Now, if I want a multiple radio options, what should happen? It should display the 
multiple options here. What happened? It is not coming. What is the value that I need to use it here? What is the value that I need to use? What is the value that I need to use it for the select options, radio button? Item label. Okay, so why it is not coming here? Anybody, whoever is attended my previous class, they know that. What to use here? Select radio and select options. Yeah, for the select radio, uh, it should be label. And uh, for the select option, it should be item label. Okay. What is happening? Should it be inside the page block section? Page block section? Item label. Sadashiv Raj Puneet. So I think we have to give item label as well as item value. Others? What should we give? Uh, it should store uh, in the back end, right? It should store some value in the back end. So I think you should give both item label and item value. Do I need to give both? Is everybody agree or do I need to give any one or any other thing that I need to give? Basangar, Puneet, Raj, Sadashiv, what should I need to give in order to show the values here? I'm getting the radio option button, but the values I'm not getting it. What should I need to do? What is the attribute that I need to use it here? Raj? Uh, we want a drop down list, right? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Who is that? Now what we are doing is we are implementing the radio button. Before we go on the drop down, we wanted to understand what is the select option. Okay. Because I'm okay. going to use the select options here. I'm going to use the select options. Before what I'm trying to say is we have a two things. One is a select options and second one is select option. There are two things are there select option and select options. Okay, before I go to the select options, we have, I wanted to show the select option. This we have already discussed previously. So what is the value that I need to use it in order to display the, what is the attribute that I need to use it in order to display the name of the option? Okay. Then uh, is it title? Sorry? 
What is the value that, what is the attribute that I need to use it? Title. No, it doesn't come. What is the attribute that we have to use it? This we have discussed in our previous sessions. It's item value, ma'am. We have to give label and value together in order to display label and value together we have to give so that it will be displayed the options there. Now, but if I give label for all of them same and value also all of them will be same. So what will happen? Does it display? Yes, it doesn't no. matter. Oh, value should be unique, right? Value should be unique, but if I'm giving the same one, what will happen is it displays it. But when the logic goes beyond behind that, there is an error that is going to come because system get confused if we have a same value. The data is displayed in the Visual Force page. The label name gets displayed here. But on selection of label, what is the value that needs to be captured behind this is decided by the item value. If I keep the item value same, then what will happen? Behind this, what are the logic is that it will not work because for everybody it is a value is new. Now this is a option. Now what are we going to do it is, we are going to implement options. We are going to implement options inside the select list. Why do we need an option here? Why do we need a options? Because it's a drop down list records. and we have we to have select one. Multiple records that we are going to store it. So when we need a select options, this select options has to be the, the select options has to be used in the Apex class in order to store the account names. We have to use the select options inside the Apex class where the variable name, I can use it any variable, let's say that I'm storing the account information. So inside this account information, I can get records out of the 10 records, I can, I can get account names. So let's go ahead and implement that. The first thing is that I need to get the account data. I need to get the account records from database. How can I get the records from the database here? Using the SQL query and for loop. SQL query, right? For loop. For loop account, and I'll give A equal to colon. Select ID, comma name from account. Limit 10. Limit 10, I'm going to take it. Now inside this, I need a one variable to store the account name. How can I get the account name? A dot name, right? A dot name. But this A dot name, I should store it into the somewhere. I should store it into the somewhere. What is the value that we are thinking on? List of. List of select options. Select options. Right? Select option ACC. This is the variable. Ideally, what we do in, in order to declare any variable inside this, we use the public, right? List of select options, ACC. And what is the keyword that I'll use here? Get and set. Get set. Okay. Now what I'll do is, I'll divide more in depth here. Now what I need this ACC is, I need 
specifically get set i might not be using it i'm only going to get the data from database in future also i'm not going to use the set so i'll take out the set i just need a get here i'm going to get the account details right within but, uh, but we are setting these values in visual force page right we are not setting it we are displaying it what are the data that comes here we are displaying here below what are the acc has acc has the reference to this list i'll give acc variable value here acc equal to this list and what it will do it will display the value i'm not going to set it in case if you have a set you can use a set that's not an issue but okay. right right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to divide this get okay now while declaring the variable while declaring the accs while declaring the accs what i'll do is i wanted to execute this ideally what we used in previously we have implemented the constructor inside the constructor i have done this logic and i stored the all the list of the values in the accs accs so now if i want like right now i do not want the constructor right now i do not want the constructor what i am going to do is on the declaration of the variable only i wanted to get this information on declaration of the variable i wanted to get this information so how can we do it De while declaring the variable we have a get set so when you have a get set right inside the get open the op curly braces and then use this for loop right inside this what i can do is i can declare a one list of select option name equal to i'll initialize the list i'll initialize the list now i'll store this all the account names into this account name dot add what i'll say new select option i will be having a key and value because whenever we are doing the radio option whenever we were doing the radio option we have a key and value what is the key label is the key value is value so here also we have to use the same thing what is that a dot name is the key as well as i'll use a value also same for now let's assume that name is both of them key and value both of them has a value both of them has a value now this return i'll return the acc name i'll return the acc name is everybody clear this i'm not writing the constructor here i'm not writing the constructor here and while declaring the variable itself i'm getting the data any questions on this okay so while declaring the variable i'm getting the data what are the logic that i used to implement in the constructor i'm doing it in the while declaring the variable itself 
Now I have a values into the ACCS, right? I have a values into the ACCS. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and use this ACCS for this. Now I, how can I declare it? Value equal to, I can give ACCS. ACCS is the variable that is created here. Now, what is the error that I'm getting here for the visual post page? What is the error that I'm getting in the visual post page? We didn't connect the class using controller. We did not connect the class. It is saying that property reference I cannot use. I don't know where it is. Now ACCS, and then we have a, inside that we have a Apex colon select options. Select options. Okay, I'll change here one thing. I'll take out this value. Basically, those are the values, right? Let's say, let's click on preview. Now what happened? It is showing inside the list. All the 10 records it is showing because we are just right now we are just displaying the thing. We are just displaying the thing. Why it is only in the this select multi select option? This is a right now it is a kind of a pick list value, right? It should be in the arrow mark. As per our design, it should be when I click on the arrow, it should display the all the values. When I click on arrow, it should display the all the values. But right now, what is happening? All of this is displayed in the box. Okay, do not worry. We'll come to that point. Now, what I'm doing it, I'm just displaying the data. I'm just displaying the data, whatever we got it from the query. Whatever we got it from the query. Right? Let's keep it there. Now, next thing is that, assume that I have a pick list. Okay, on selection, I need to store something. Whenever I click on drop down, I need to store some data. If I selected this sample account, then I need to store somewhere the selected value. Right, selected value, I need to store it. Where I need to store it? String data type. String data type, I need to store it. So let's go ahead and declare that public string. public string, let's say selected value, selected value. Now I'm going to use the get as well as I'm going to set that. Okay, now I have selected value. Now what I'll do, who is selecting that drop down? Whenever I click on the drop down, I can select the one of the value. So who is doing that select list? So what I'll do select list value equal to I'll say that selected value. Now let's go ahead and refresh. Okay, still it is not coming in the drop down. Still it is not coming in the drop down. So what I'll do is I'll say size equal to one. Now let's refresh. Fine, it is converted into the pick list. Now, what are the values that I selected? Where is the data that is getting stored? It is stored in the selected value. Now our selected value has the information. Selected value has the information. Clear? Till this point, is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, next thing is that we need two wrappers. One is for contact, one is for opportunity. I need two wrappers. Okay. 
Now I'll go to the class. Okay. Inside this class, what I'll do? Public class. I'll implement contact wrapper. Contact wrapper. This is a wrapper class. Inside this wrapper class, what I need? Let's assume that whatever we have implemented yesterday, we'll create a one variable to store the contact information. C, get and set. Right, another one, let's give it as a selected, just for a safe purpose. Selected equal to another variable, I'm going to use it selected. Get and set. For inside this wrapper, we need to initialize the constructor. Public constructor, constructor should have the same name of the class. Constructor method name should have same name of the class. Now, what is the value that I need here? Parameters contact C as well as I'm going to get the selected. It is a Boolean. Boolean C. Boolean selected. Right? Boolean selected and I'll use the parameter contact C. Now, inside this constructor, what I'll say, this dot selected. This is nothing but, which is going to call the same class. Within the same class, it is going to call this selected. Equal to, what is the value that I'm assigning it? From the instance variable, what are the value that I'm getting it? Let's say this just for our purpose to understand. I'll say SEL. and assigning the SEL to the selected. SEL to the selected, same thing. This dot C equal to, what I'm going to do, con. This dot C equal to con. This is my wrapper class. What did we done? We did it contact wrapper. We did the contact wrapper. Now, same thing we are going to implement the opportunity wrapper because we need opportunity wrapper also. Now, I'll copy the same, but only thing is that objects which are is different. Here we have used the contact and now we are going to use the opportunity. This is the opportunity wrapper. I'll say opportunity. This is OPP. Now this is opportunity. Let's say OPP one. Now here this dot OPP equal to OPP one. Okay. So boolean value I'll use as it is. This is a set. And constructor method name should be changed to opportunity wrapper. So it should be same as the class name. Thank you. Should be same as the class name. Now I have it to wrappers are done. Now next thing what should happen whenever this is selected, whenever the value is selected. Where, where is the value stored in selected value? Selected value is stored into the variable called selected value. Whenever this has some data, based on this data, I'm going to execute some logic to get the opportunity and contact information. Fine, we will see that uh, probably uh, tomorrow or Monday because what are we doing it here? On change of this value. On change of the value. Whenever the value is changed, then I wanted to display the two information. Whenever the value is changed, I wanted to display the contact and this. So on change, I wanted to capture the data of account name. On change, 
I wanted to capture the data or the account name I wanted to capture. Based on that, I wanted to display the information here. Clear? So that we will do tomorrow. We have to move on to the admin class. Okay, we have done with the select option. We are done with the contact wrapper. Just creating the contact wrapper opportunity. List is not yet done. List is not yet done. I just created the contact wrapper and opportunity wrapper. That will hold only the single record. Why it will hold the single record? Because we have a single opportunity, right? It is not a list. It is a single opportunity, single contact. We just created the opportunity wrapper and contact wrapper. But how to store the list of opportunities and list of contact that is yet to come. So we will discuss that tomorrow. Yeah, so let's move on to the admin. Before I move on to the admin, any questions? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. So let's stop recording.